This presentation covers standing waves that are open at one end. This kind of standing wave is created by wind instruments. Just like all standing waves, this wave is produced when two waves of the same frequency and amplitude travel in opposite directions in a medium. While standing waves closed at both ends can be created by one or two wave sources, this wave is created by a single source. It is created when a single wave source overlaps the reflection from a fixed boundary or closed end. People either call this standing wave closed at one end or they call it a standing wave that's open at one end. Notice that a node is always found at the closed end and an anti-node is always found at the open end. The first standing wave is created by the fundamental or lowest frequency. The fundamental, fundamental frequency always has the largest wavelength. The first thing you have to learn is how to relate the standing wave distance L to the wavelength lambda. When you are counting wavelengths, it is important to know that the distance between a node and an antinode, or an antinode and a node, is one quarter of a wavelength. Since the fundamental frequency produces only a node and an antinode, it is one quarter of a wavelength long, and the wavelength is 4L, or four times the standing wave length. Now let's find out how many quarter wavelengths we have in the next harmonic. We have N, A, N, A. So we have one, two, three quarter wavelengths. Right away we see that this kind of standing wave is different than the one that is closed at both ends. Since we have three times more wavelengths than the fundamental, this standing wave is produced by a frequency that is three times, not two times, the fundamental. Now let's look at the next harmonic. It is N, A, N, A, N, A. That is one, two, three, four, five quarters of a wavelength. This wave is produced by a frequency that is five times the fundamental. When we solve for the wavelength, we find that it is four fifths of the length of the standing wave. With a standing wave that is open at one end, each frequency is an odd number multiple of the fundamental. That is one, three, five, seven, or nine times the fundamental. I'm going to pause for a short period of time so you can count the quarter wavelengths. Did you count seven quarter wavelengths? The wavelength in this tube is four sevenths the length of the standing wave. Let's review what you've learned about a standing wave closed at one end. These standing waves have a node at one end and an antinode at the other end. The length of this standing wave is always an odd number multiple of a quarter of a wavelength. Every harmonic is an odd number multiple of the fundamental. If the fundamental is 2 hertz, a standing wave can be produced inside the same tube at 6, 10, and 14 hertz. A standing wave could be not produced with the same open tube if the frequency was 9 hertz. If the fundamental is 20 hertz, then a standing wave can be produced at 60, 100, and 140 hertz. That would be 1, 3, 5, and 7. Let's try an example problem. A closed air column resonates with a fundamental frequency of 256 hertz. What is the length of this air column if the speed of the wave is 343 meters per second? We use the velocity equation to find the wavelength. The wavelength turns out to be 1.339, and the length of this tube is a quarter of a wavelength, so a quarter of 1.339 is 0.335. Example 2. This standing wave is created in a closed pipe by a frequency of 27 hertz. What is the smallest frequency that will produce a standing wave in this tube? This is the 1, 2, 3rd harmonic, so it's 3 times the first. If this frequency is 27 hertz, the fundamental would be 9 hertz, because this is 3 times the fundamental. A sound wave resonates in a closed pipe with a length of 9 centimeters. What is the wavelength of this wave? So the standing wave's length is L, and we have 3 quarters of a wavelength. So if L equals 3 quarters of a wavelength, then the wavelength is 4 thirds L. And if L is 9 centimeters, and f then, four th then 4 thirds of 9 centimeters is 12 centimeters. A closed air column resonates with a fundamental frequency of 4.40 times 10 to the second hertz. If the length of the air column is 18.9 centimeters, what is the speed of the sound wave? Well, the length of the air column is capital L, which when we convert is 0.189 meters. 
And since we're at the fundamental, the wavelength is 4 times L because we have a quarter of a wavelength. So to find the wavelength is just 4 times the length of the tube. Get 0.756. Plug that wavelength into the velocity formula, and we'll get 330 meters per second. A sound wave resonates in a tube with one open end. What are the wavelengths of the three lowest resonating frequencies generated in this tube? Since the lowest frequency will produce a quarter of a wavelength, then the wavelength will be 4L. Right away we see it's choice D. If a closed air column resonates with a fundamental frequency of, a th of 384 hertz, what is the frequency of the third harmonic? Since the third harmonic is three times the fundamental, we simply take 384 and multiply it by three. A 55 centimeter closed air column will resonate to many frequencies. However, the lowest frequency to which it resonates is 156 hertz. What is the speed of sound in this tube? At the lowest frequency, the, the length of the tube holds a quarter of a wavelength. So that means the wavelength is 4L. And if the length is 0.55 meters, the wavelength is 2.2. Multiply the frequency times the wavelength, and you get 3.5 four times 10 to the second meters per second. What is the shortest closed air column that will resonate to a sound source or a tuning fork that has a frequency of 4.4 times 10 to the second hertz, assuming that the speed of the sound is 341 meters per second? So we'll use this velocity equation to solve for the wavelength. And so we know with the smallest, if we're looking for the smallest tube, we know that it occurs at the fundamental, where the wavelength is 4L, and the length is a quarter of a wavelength. So, we since 4L equals the wavelength, take the wavelength and divide it by 4, and you'll get the length of the tube. This is the end of my presentation on standing waves that are closed at one end.